And I'll tell you that right now we have five full-time eligibility administrators who are looking at the files and doing the research that's necessary to move us in a position to be, to be ready. We have two customer relations staffers that are on hand basically to do nothing but to receive telephone calls and email messages from you and other constituent groups so that we can route you to the right information and get you plugged in. Uh, and in the, we will add three more full-time administrators very soon here in the next uh, weeks or next month or so. So we'll get ourselves up to where we have about 11 administrators who are dedicated to the eligibility process you know, on a regular basis. And then in the busy season, which we would describe as probably May through September, our plan is to double the size of the staff, that we will bring in seasonal administrators for that period of time, high school admissions counselors, others with experience in the eligibility process, and we'll bring those folks on board in order to treat the volume that we believe is going to be coming down the line. We're encouraged, frankly, by the number of people who are in the system at this point. But we know that that's, that that's going to be a peak as the summer rolls on, and we're doing our very best to be ready for that peak. Uh, our priorities are early decisions first. I've already talked about that. Shortlist students, somebody who appears on an institutional shortlist is a next priority for us. And then we'll take the students in the order that they registered. So again, register early. That'll get them into the process and get them earlier to the cl or closer to the front of the line. And then lastly, we'd be treating fall sports. If there are issues about trying to get somebody on the field as quickly as we can, we're obviously going to place a priority there as well. Um, for whatever reason, we can't predict the future entirely, and because we know the anxiety exists out there at the campus level about how this will go in the first year, the, those wiser than us, the Competitive Experience Committee and the National Eligibility Committee have made a decision to put in place a voucher system, which basically allows an institution, if we are outside our established standard of service, for, for responding to you with an eligibility decision in the time that's appropriate. If we go outside that standard of service, then the institutions will be able to vouch for students to say, I know this student is eligible. There's no question in my mind that they're eligible. And we will th therefore say, OK, that student's eligible to practice and compete based on your assurance that they are eligible. Assuming that they are eligible, we'll move forward. The student will still have to go all the way through the process, but it gives you sort of a safety valve, an assurance that we will not be keeping students off the field just because of delays in the system in some way. If it turns out that you vouch for a student and that student turns out to be not eligible, then there will be eligibility consequences, obviously. There will be issues with the, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, committee on uh, infraction. What's the sorry, the name of the committee, Conduct, Conduct and Ethics Committee, sorry, um, issues there, and it would also put you in a position where you wouldn't be able to vouch uh, in, in future months. So by April 1, our plan is to have established standards of service, in essence, a guarantee of service for students once all the information is received. So we're going to say to you by April 1, this is the standard of service that we're going to use to treat students in the system. And if we fall out the, outside that standard of service, then the voucher system in the, in the weeks leading up to a given term could come into place. It's our belief that isn't going to be necessary, but we do hope that's an assurance to our membership. International students. The information that's needed, ACT, SAT scores are sent directly to us. Proof of graduation and official transcripts need to be sent to the NAI Eligibility Center. And if there are language issues, then a line-by-line -line translation must be provided. With proof of graduation and official transcripts, certified copies of those may be forwarded by the originating institution, or they can be forwarded by the student's NAIA school. Translations have to be provided by a credentialed independent professional not associated with the student or the NAIA institution's athletic department. You could use a credentialed professional on your campus, but not somebody who is functioning through the athletics department. I'm going to talk very quickly about the role of the campus. 
this is language that was again reviewed by the Competitive Experience Committee and the National Eligibility Committee because we wanted to be real clear about what the roles were on each side of the equation. And the way we think about it is that we're partners in the process, that coaches, faculty reps, campus administrators all share a responsibility with us to educate students and explore issues that may affect a student's eligibility. We believe, and the committees believe, you should campus faculty rep, campus administrator, you should rely on the information, the work that we're doing. But at the same time, you do serve as a check in the system because you may get information at some point along the way which we don't have, and in the event that happens, it is your affirmative responsibility. That's the word that's used by the committees. It's your affirmative responsibility to tell us that as soon as you have that information. And to not provide that information is a violation of NAI rules. So it's a, it's a partnership between the two. We hope there's a lot of work we're doing that will help you at the campus level to be confident that the right decision is being made. And that's the point, obviously, overall. When we make a decision, at the time we make a decision, for every institution that has that student on a short list, we're going to communicate out and we're going to say this is the eligibility decision and we're going to in essence have a conversation at that point and our conversation is going to be this is what we believe the determination to be campus do you have any information that would suggest there should be some other determination made do you have other information that may affect the students eligibility and if the answer is yes then you need to tell us that so you can request a review if you don't agree with the determination we've made for whatever reason that we've just asleep at the switch for some reason, we made an obvious error, there's information we don't have, you tell us that. You tell us why you've got a problem and what you believe the information is that we should have. We take that into account and we will either say, you're right, no question, that student should be eligible, or we'll amend the student's eligibility status, or we'll affirm our original decision. And that's a conversation that we need to, that needs to take place at the end of the eligibility determination by the NAI because again, our, our whole interest in this process is shared with you and that's to, to get us to where we have made the right decision. If we get to the end of that process and the institution still does not agree, there's another process which is a formal appeal which is outside the eligibility center entirely and I'm going to let Marcus take that in, in just a minute. Scott? I want to follow up with just a, a few questions here for for the panel. Uh, this this one comes from one of our one of our people here in the room today, uh, Deanne uh, Dirksen at Tabor College, who's the registrar at Tabor. Uh, Deanne asks if you would just clarify and and, and redefine uh, the, the word you know the, the the concept of participation, and um, do we need to put athletes on eligibility lists even if they haven't played in a in a competition or a competitive situation? Uh, and then I have a follow-up question to that as well. So, and if maybe if Deanne needs to maybe to speak to that a little bit more specifically, she could do that as well. Participation. Participation means actually playing in a contest. Yes. And then the uh, the, the scenario. This is a good question, I believe. Um, it says if a student was enrolled full time at an NAI school spring semester only. Do they need to go through the eligibility center this coming fall? If the student was enrolled full time in the spring semester, yes, then and continues enrollment at that same institution the following fall, then no, they're not required to register. Right. The the, the question was the in 2010-11 they were enrolled only for a single semester, that being the spring 11 semester. And yes, we consider that to be enrollment in 2010-11, and assuming they continue enrollment at that institution full-time, they would not be required to register. If that student were to transfer to another NAI institution, would that, would that also be true, or would they need to then enroll with Eligibility Center? If they were only there for spring, that freshman year, or, or, or transfer from a junior college, just that one spring semester, would they need to then if they transferred, also go through Eligibility Center? Uh, I'm not sure that I followed the question, Scott. I'm sorry. Well, the, the, the statement that you, had, that you had indicated was that they stay enrolled at that school. At that if they were to transfer to another school, would that policy still be in effect, or would they need to register with NAI uh, 
the eligibility center. A student must register if they haven't participated prior to 2011 and if they haven't maintained full-time enrollment at the same institution from 2010-11 to 2011-12. Perfect. Okay. Uh, next question I have for the, uh, the committee, or for the panel, I should say, uh, this I believe comes in from Tony Grimm with the, uh, the Cascade Athletic Conference. Uh, if a student is cleared via early decision, but then ends up not qualifying because of GPA or other issues, does the school need to notify the NAI Eligibility Center, or would that be more of a student responsibility? Well, first, you should know that the policy we put into place for early decision um, ensures that a student who graduates will not fall below the GPA standard that we've set for the early decision. Um, so the only thing that might come into play is if for some reason that student then didn't graduate after receiving an early decision, in which case the school would not be able to certify that student. And I think Marcus and Heidi will talk a little bit in our next section about um, the campus's responsibility after a determination has been made for a student and address, and address that a little bit further. But um, the student uh, would need to be certified on campus, and if they didn't graduate, the campus would not be able to certify that student. Okay. Thanks, Angela. Uh, our next question comes in from Chad Schilling. Uh, Chad's from Bethel College, a volleyball coach and sports information director at Bethel College. Uh, Chad's question is, what is the projected turnaround time uh, for status to be updated once all paperwork is submitted? Well, that's the standard of service that I was referring to, and we're having conversations about that right now. So, um, yeah, I, I can't really say at this point what we believe the standard of service to be, but I'll say by April 1 we're going to commit ourselves to it. So I, I, I'm hesitant at this point to sort of put a, a number of days out there, but basically, you know, our, our view is that we understand that it's very important for us to make a quick turnaround on these cases. We also understand that some of those files are going to be very complex, and we're really not going to be able to make a guarantee as to how long it's going to take to turn that case around. But for the standard uh, student for whom there is information readily available uh, and for whom we have all the information that we need on file, my view is we're going to be able to turn that around very quickly. And I apologize for not being able to define very quickly at this point, but we're right in the middle of those conversations now, and I, uh, I, I, we just need a little bit more time to work that through. Might be safe to say, John, that you said to get your stuff in early. You know, the earlier you get it in, the better off you're going to be. Continue to encourage athletes, recruits, and right. our, and our that, schools. That's absolutely true. But, but Scott, I mean, I, I think we're very sensitive to the point of view that in NAI recruiting often, you have young people who come on your campus and they show up very close to the beginning of classes and uh, it's time to get those students um, set and playing on the field. And we know that's got to be a quick turnaround. So we're sensitive to it. That's why we're staffing up to get ourselves ready to respond to that. And we intend to provide a level of service that's going to meet your needs. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, actually, I actually have a, a statement from Joyce.